I mean, there's a lot of talk about audience targeting, right. know, all the way to the household level, right. um, leveraging all kinds of uh, powerful data. And I wanted to talk to you about kind of where that's going and how that relates to the topic of um, of brand safety and fraud and, and, and dealing with, with data at that granular level. So programmatic when it comes to the upfront specifically. This week is very special because it's the up, uh, upfront week. Um, there are three ways to trade in a programmatic fashion. A one-for-one -one relationship between the seller and the buyer, one and many, and one all. The, the transaction that is really important to sellers and buyers in this premium space is one-for-one -one relationship, which is the programmatic guaranteed world. We think the programmatic guaranteed world is going to be the next generation of uh, programmatic transactions for premium publishers because this guarantees a safe transaction for both the seller and the buyer. It also gives control back to the publisher. So both seller and buyer would agree on terms, price, flight, flight dates, inventory, audience type, and the seller would actually bundle the inventory and guarantee it to the buyer and the terms would be agreed upon, which is very important in an upfront setup. I think this is the major way forward for video in the future. It's also a nice way to bridge online video, digital video with programmatic TV or linear TV, where we think uh, the programmatic guaranteed world will be the way to transact both uh, digital and TV. So where does that stand with Freewheel in, in terms of rolling out in the industry? Um, so. Back in December, um, Comcast basically assembled all the um, ad tech assets into four different business units. The business unit I'm running, which is called Markets, is basically today three different groups. One group is uh, programmatic TV, so a, a linear TV SSP, if you will. And the other two groups are digital video. What we're doing now is we're building a unified stack that essentially is allowing for the selling of linear TV as well as digital video on the same platform, which is a major step forward. So where does that stand in the marketplace and how do you see that rolling out in the next year? Well, this is, um, we have all the building blocks today. We have already programmatic TV, we have already digital video. Um, the one thing that is very important is building this unified stack, which is really the future for the industry. This is what the sellers want, but it's also what the buyers want eventually. Um, this will span across uh, multiple years. It's a long-term effort, but that's our vision as a company. Tell us your, your take on header bidding, why it's important, and. Uh, how it relates to your business. I think what we need to understand is header bidding, header bidding was designed for desktop and display. It was not designed for video and it wasn't designed for new screens like mobile. It doesn't really work on mobile. It doesn't work on OTT. It doesn't work in set-up box environment. It doesn't work in non-IP environment like you know cable set-up boxes which are a huge pool of inventory, video inventory. Uh, plus, it introduces delay in the transaction, so it basically ruins the user experience because it introduces latency. So what we actually think is we need a unified decisioning technology that basically calls out all the buyers and eliminates those issues, being able to manage all screens, not introduce delay, and also not silo direct sold and programmatic because head of bidding actually silos the two kind of uh, transaction methods. You have direct sold in one hand managed by the ad server and programmatic managed by head of bidding. They don't compete with one another, which basically defeats the purpose of holistic competition across the board between direct sold and programmatic. If you put everything into one technology, you have a unified decisioning engine that basically covers all aspects and eliminates the head of bidding down for, uh, drawbacks. We do this today. We have already a unified decisioning engine where direct sold campaign compete with programmatic campaigns and, and also is able to address all screens. So that's a value proposition we have already today. Viewability and fraud or anti-fraud is a very big issue. Uh, at Freewheel, we have a very special positioning only focusing on the very premium publishers. 
um, when we had the meth bot case that came out earlier this year with wide ops, we actually conducted a study and 99.999% of our traffic did not match the IP addresses that WideOps had listed. So, which means our publishers are inherently clean. Um, and that's very true uh, for the entire TV ecosystem, which is very reassuring for the buyers. Buyers want to make sure they buy clean inventory. And when it comes to viewability, it's also a very important metric for buyers. They want to make sure their ads are seen so in the same space, uh, we conducted a, um, a study with the VMR report, and on average, we were 15 percentage points above the average viewability metrics for the random publishers. So that's a very compelling story for the buyers. But I would say there's a bigger story to viewability. Uh, viewability needs to embrace all devices. It's been designed initially for desktop. When we think of video, it includes OTT, it includes mobile, it includes set -up box, VOD, it includes eventually linear TV. How do we measure viewability in this world, which accounts for more than 70% of the video views um, today? So those devices need to be taken into account as well in the future.